We're gonna introduce ourselves now, cause yeah, we didn't do that last time. So yeah, this is Mikey Boombox TV. Um, tell him your name. SoCal's one son with underscores, cause I'm on PlayStation. Because he's not an Xbox. He's, he's not. not an, he's not an elitist. No, by no means. I'm the exact opposite. I'm a pleb. He's a peasant. Uh, on uh, PlayStation. My username is Vice City Six Hundred. It's old as shit. Uh, on Steam, it's Mikey Boombots. I don't know if I put TV at the end of it, but I might just put TV at the end of it. So, uh, if you want to add me on Steam, by all means. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, so we finally uh, thought of a name, Code Red. And it wasn't taken. Everything that we came up with it, was taken it in was, some form or fashion. It was kind of taken, but it's not a gaming podcast, so. Uh, last week he texted me saying uh, we got a code red because uh, broadcast has been taken and uh, then I was also drinking the Mountain Dew code red and I was like well Mountain Dew is like the gaming drink so why not put them both together and there we go we have a masterpiece Mountain Dew call us we need money Mm -hmm. give us a sponsorship right now so yeah, that was the second episode of our podcast. All we'll right. see you next week. Peace, guys. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so. Let's knock into some con- uh, some content. Before we get started, what have you been doing this week with gaming? You been playing anything new? Been playing any of the yeah, same old? Yeah, I've been playing uh, Firewatch, uh, and it's a, it's actually pretty amazing. Yeah, last time I saw you playing it, um, it was pretty early on. The last yeah. thing I remember was uh, like. Your typewriter got thrown out the window, yeah. and then I didn't see anything else. You went to bed, so I don't it's, know what happened this week. It's definitely um, walking simulator-esque. I haven't been playing anything at all today because I've been feeling like crap, so I've just been watching Dragon Ball Super all day. Um, and But no, it's the storyline is just fantastic. The voice acting is great. Uh, the visuals of that game itself is just... It's, it's cartoony, but it's like it's also very... It's like the wilderness just makes it just makes it bright, you know. So like it brings out that wilderness look, and I just I I don't know. I'm really enjoying it. Like it is. There's a there's a some some type of nice feeling that you get from it, you know. You that that happy feeling that you get from it. It's like it, it's funny, it's sad, it's like oh shit, what's gonna happen next? So you kind of have that element of surprise at all times. So you don't know what's gonna happen next. Like I, my theory is, the uh, no spoilers, but. There's, there's a situation that happened, and my situ and uh, my analysis would be like it's definitely the chick that I'm talking to. I feel like she's behind it all, but I don't know. She's your only contact. So exactly. Point, right? exactly. Yeah, so, so I'm like, just like, well, could? Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like she's behind all this. I feel yeah. like she's crazy and wants to steal me away from my wife. Yeah. The the story is something to the effect of uh, he's work. His character is working a job, and he takes it as like a park ranger type of deal. Yeah. Where he's like, he's like a park ranger type deal. Yeah. So he has no communication except through this one lady. So yeah, and she's like on the yeah. opposite side of the canyon that he's working at. So he so it starts off you you're choosing dialogue to you know to pretty much I guess develop the story. You know, so it shows how you met your wife, yada yada yada, and um, her parents end up moving her back to Australia because she's. Um, She's, they say that I'm not fit to take care of her because she's like going through like some illness, dementia or something uh, like that. Some, something like that, yeah. Some so, um, yeah. So that you know, he didn't go. He didn't go to Australia. So he's decided to work as the park ranger, or whatever. And he's been talking to this girl on the fucking walkie-talkie, and I think they're starting to like like each other. Or she start. She's definitely. She definitely likes him. That's hundred. That's hundred and ten percent. She wants him. So that's he just all, out there to be so alone that, and watch bears. Yeah. Fuck. So so that so that's why I'm like, I feel like like she's behind it and she's just trying to like. Maybe. Cause yeah, there's like a point where like. Yeah, cause that 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 in, that first conversation that I was there for that first conversation you have with there's like people get do this for a certain reason and she seemed, just seemed kind of weird about it like she's trying yeah. to fish for like are you she's fishing yeah, she, yeah she's fishing for like answers and stuff like that yeah I noticed when you're playing that game um. So this was the vibe I got off of it, uh, uh, for, uh, as far as the graphics go. Mm-hmm. When I was watching it, it was daytime, and you're walking through the woods, and I think you were on your way to the tower or something. Mm-hmm. With the way that the woods and the trees and like the textures of the branches and stuff looked, it reminded me of kind of like a 
darker resolution of like Zelda Breath yeah. of the Wild. That's what I got yeah. out of that. Is okay. that, that yeah, that, I was like, I got that that's vibe. What, I was like, that looks uh, nice. Th- that's, that's, I, was, I was trying to figure out. I'm like trying to figure out like, what is it about this game design that's like that looks... makes me really happy right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's cartoony, but it's also like very serious at the same time. But it's not as pale colored right. as like Zelda. And it was. still it looks very yeah. It still look looks very it. pretty. So like I'm just like yeah, it looked really nice. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it kind of gives you that little aspect where you're walking through. You know, through the forest, or whatever, trying to get that nice little, like, trying to get that good vibe of just, you know, just isolation. You know, so you're, you're at, you know, and then you're just like, then you hear her just come out of nowhere on the walkie-talkie, just like, you know, bullshitting, like you whatever. Can just be getting it's into like, the yeah. world and enjoying how everything looks. Right. And then she just pops in like, oh hey, you've hit this checkpoint in the game, so now I gotta talk right. to you. But, <laughs> but there's actually a storyline, uh-huh. so it's like, a lot of it is just like, you know, bullshit conversations of them joking around and, um. You know, trying to get to know each other and stuff like that. And it's like, she's like in love with a guy that she's realistically never met. That's how I'm getting at. I'm getting these vibes where she actually has feelings for him. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's going to be like a plot twist, you know? So, I, I don't know. I've, I've been enjoying it. I haven't played it all week. Um, tomorrow's Sunday. I'm, I'm probably going to play it tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, if I feel better. Um, and then uh, I, I uh, tortured myself with Dark Souls the other day. Dark Souls 2, uh, 45 minutes, and I literally got nowhere. So that, that was fun. Um, <laughs> that was terrible. Um, just added Bloodborne to the library, so I'm trying to see if I can mm. uh, get mm. in to, get in on that. And I also added Ratchet and Clank, which would actually be one of our topics technically later. Yes, it will be. So uh, yeah, I mean, I've been playing a lot. I played. I've been playing a lot this week. Obviously, Rocket League. That's like it's like one of the games that I play with Chris all the time. So. Uh, oh, and I've been playing Hunt Showdown. Yeah, I didn't week. get it. I, I think I dropped in for some audio, but I don't think I watched you, though. Um, I was you know, something. Was so in case if anybody doesn't know. But I've seen some footage of it. Hunt Showdown is, I wouldn't say PUBG-esque, because, yeah, there's PvP. It's not like Battle Royale, Battle Royale. But it's not right? Battle Royale. Like, it's not Battle Royale at all. So, yeah. the, so, you got like, so here's the thing. Um... The primary goal of that game is basically to kill these monsters to get the to get their bounties for currency. Um, PVE monsters, right? PVE monsters, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not mandatory, so it's actually more high risk, high reward type deal. So, so the purpose is to do that. It is, but, but it's not required. to it's do It's not it, required. Right? So, okay. In other words, um, you can go in. And just kill a bunch of zombies, and then just dip out. So you know that that'll get you your experience up. So if you want to level up your character, um, I, I honestly, like from what I just kind of learned to do was, I would make like a bullshit character, and just level up my rank, and then just put my upgrades towards my good character. Um, I could actually just do it like that, but um, most of the time, like we'll we'll try to just get like the clues in the game because you get three clues and then it leads you to an area to where the monster is at so it'll but each clue is 25 bucks so you can just get those three clues get 75 dollars kill a bunch of zombies get all that experience and then extract and then you actually get a lot of experience for extracting alive okay so that's how you level up your character or if you kill a, a hunter um is that it's another, a hunter you know it's a, another player that's yeah another player okay it's uh, 150 a player. So it's PVE with PVP right. elements. And it's like so. What's yeah. stronger in it, the PVE or the PVP, or does it just depend on? It all you depends land? on the situation because because you don't know who's alive, you don't know who's dead. Oh, you got no map? No, you do have a map. You do have a map, but it doesn't let you know who died or any anything like that. Oh, so you could be the last two people there or something. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't know. And you wouldn't know. Oh, so that's why it's high risk, high reward. On top of that, the the monsters aren't easy. They're not easy to kill at all, and then I've never killed any of them. I've tried, and then I would just get intercepted by somebody, or the monster would kill me. Okay. That's why I'm saying it's almost like not worth it. And what you could do, actually, which is a strategy, you can let somebody else kill the monster, and by the time they leave, you can pretty much sneak up on them and steal the bounty from them. Now, how do you know where they are? You don't. But, you don't. But if you get to the monster, right, oh, okay. you could be a little asshole and, you know... Oh, camp and wait? Camp and wait oh, for them okay. to kill the monster and then steal the bounty from them. Gotcha, because gotcha. it gives away your position once you banish oh, okay. banish the monster. Oh, okay, so the, so, so what, do you do you like pop up on the map 
Is that person? Yeah, it'll show like a lightning, oh, okay. like like fucking like lightning going through like through the sky. Interesting. So, okay. realistically, you can you can do that. It, like I said, it's high risk, high reward. So, because if you die, you lose your hunter. You lose all. You lose, so you mm. have to recruit a brand new hunter. So all your levels and all your upgrades are gone. Now, how much bullshit is it compared to something like the Dark Zone and the Division? Which um, I dabbled a little bit with when it was in beta, so I, I kind of remember the gist of it, but I didn't get deep in it. I would say, like I, I would say, did, it's, so. I would say, I guess it's a little on par when it comes to, right. when it comes to actually fighting the monster, because you're always gonna, because it takes a while to kill that monster, and you'll be sitting there fucking loading this thing up, and then you'll just have a, like a bunch of people just come out of nowhere and just. What wreck era you. are you in? What kind of guns do you have? It's like the 1800s. Okay. It's like lover actions and stuff like that, like Wild Wild West type deal. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's it's. Like I said, it's high, it's high risk, high reward, so it's almost not worth it to just go for the monster right off the bat. Um, normally, like we'll just grab we'll we'll grab the clues and dip out, or if we'll kill people, we'll immediately dip out because they just gave us a ton of experience. Oh, okay. So, so you get more experience for killing other players than you do a handful of monsters. Yeah, because okay. I mean. If you kill a, like a, a good amount of monsters, like if you kill like twenty zombies, you're gonna get a lot of experience. Okay, so it's not still not too bad. Okay, Fair you want to always kind of be on your toes and just kind of creep around. You know what I mean? So that way you're being careful. You're not you're not trying to overdo it. Okay. I know. Uh, but yeah, I mean that that's been a lot of fun. I, I, I like playing it with my friends, honestly. Uh, it just kind of sucks that there's no squads because there's four of us, so. Um, they have two. It's twos though, right? It's all paired up. I turn twos right now. They're working on squads, apparently, to according to uh, Revolver. Okay. So, that, that that's what they were saying. They said they were they're working on uh, squads. So, that's cool. I can't wait to play that on squads. I'm gonna edit that out in case it gets picked up. I don't know if it's gonna be loud or not. Oh well, that, that I didn't even hear anything. You can that, smell it. That's fucking gross. <laughs> I feel oh, so bad. God. We'll edit this out. <clears throat> oh God! I'm don't so edit. Sorry. Don't, don't edit it out. <laughs> Leave it in there. <laughs> it's going out. I want. I, I, I don't want, even want it. I want I'm everyone disgusted. to understand you're a disgusting human being. <laughs> it's gonna linger, bro. You have a fan. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> oh. Literally. <laughs> uh, what else have I been playing? Um, I played the Sea of Thieves uh, test beta. Was oh, it still going? Last weekend. No, okay. It was last yeah, weekend. Yeah. yeah. That was a lot of fun. Uh, the, apparently there was another uh, beta today, but and yesterday, but I, I, I was I was not fucking I was not feeling games at all today. Like I couldn't, I couldn't even move. So I'm surprised I'm alive right now. But yeah, I mean that, uh, that's I can't wait for that game. I feel yeah. like the finished product of that game is gonna be so much fun because just, the, just yeah, just the test beta alone was a, was a blast. That was so much fucking fun. That's coming out on the twentieth. We'll be in Fort Pickett by then. No, oh, that sucks. Right. Damn. But I think I'm gonna get it. Damn. What else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just playing a little bit of PUBG here and there. I don't play PUBG like that anymore either. Like I not as much as I used to. But I play it every now and then. So I've I've had it oh, I mean and then I beat the other storyline for uh Dragon Ball Z Fighter at your house. So, oh that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've had I've had a handful of games I've been playing. I don't know. Quite quite a bit. Quite a bit. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So uh let's hear what you've been playing. Obviously uh we know what you've been playing. But I do. Not, not Destiny. Not, not them. Yeah, Actually surprising. not Destiny. So with me, you know how I am. I'm a totally I'm a total destiny ho. So anytime an event comes up, I ignore all all other people and I focus on that because they always drop like maybe two, three new weapons. Mm -hmm. This week I only played a little bit and I bought one weapon mm -hmm. and then I was like screw this because Bloodborne is free on PlayStation this month yes so I downloaded that and I have actually been having a blast and I am loving it so I mean you I mean you haven't played Dark Souls so I mean no how, how I mean, is have it, you only tried Dark Souls now is, I'm willing to give it a shot it, now like are you like are you actually capable of getting progression like is it hard hard especially for me yes because i'm not used to this genre i'd say after the last two days of solid like several hours of grinding i'm fairly used to like at least the 
roaming the world and beating the new big enemies that I pop can't, up. I can't get good for shit. Um, in, in even then, I can't say I'm not I'm good either, of course. I don't think anyone gets good until they've like platinum the game like that. But so I be, such a hard time so the way that, that that Dark Souls is, I don't know how it is, or Dark Souls rather, Bloodborne is. I'm assuming Dark Souls is similar, maybe even on a bigger scale. Mm-hmm. Is excuse me, you're in this one big city, mm-hmm. and you uh, start off in this one location, and anytime you uh, you die, you respawn at a lamp, and you can only respawn or start levels at these lamps that are right, that's like tied to those locations. Kind of like bonfires in Dark Souls. Okay, yeah. And so when you you can enter what they call the Hunter's Dream, which takes you, which like you dis- you kneel by the lamp, you disappear, you end up in a new area that's like away from the rest of the world, where you do your upgrades and all that kind of stuff. And so when you want to go back, you kneel by this tombstone instead of a lamp, and then you pick from a list of all the places you've unlocked uh, where you want to be. So there's like this, there's Central Yarnum. Well, Yarnum's like the name of the, the city. Mm-hmm. And so you've got like the sick play, the sick bay, first floor, whatever. You got Yarnum. You got a couple other areas where you could spawn, so you can you know move around the map quicker. Mm-hmm. And uh, unlocking those is rough because you have to get through a lot of random big guys that you don't have the stuff for, and right. then there are these random armor drops, like where it's literally like there's a dead guy, and you just walk up to it, and you wouldn't even think to because there's so many dead bodies just laying around right. the map anyways. Where you have to walk these specific guys and pick up a full set of hunter gear or a full set of some, some named gear or poison resistance gear, fire resistance gear, things like this that. This gives me poison resistance. Poison resistance. I'd wear a dress if it did. <laughs> Every night for dinner, Jenna. Um, and I so. Um, oh, so with the progression, right? So the way you progress is by expanding the map. And of course, collecting your souls and then building your characters. You can customize not really so much your armor because your armor is pretty much set. Um, I don't I haven't found a way to upgrade armor yet, but I can upgrade weapons so far. So right. your weapon, I found out I found this out the hard way right before I went to go fight a boss. I was fighting this smaller dude with a little wooden shield, mm-hmm. and I hit him, and it said "weapon broken." I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> I ran, and this dude had like this much health and I had a full bar and I ran away I was like oh my god oh my god <laughs> I didn't know I could still fight him so you can repair you can fortify add runes things like that um, you have these uh, things these consumables that you can apply specifically to your weapon to yeah. give it fire damage to give it poison damage things like that um, so there's that kind of stuff um, the um, so for me what I've done so far is I've, I've the, the first initial map that you're in, I've 100%ed that area. Okay. And I beat the two main bosses in that area, as well as did the side quests in there. And so the hardest part about it really is that it's very, I don't know how it is in Dark Souls, because from what I could tell, what I've seen, it looks like it's kind of spacious until you get into a castle or something. Mm-hmm. But here, even when you're outdoors, everything's really congested. So there's constant... Uh, well, is like three or four enemies feels like a mob because right. of how cluttered everything is. Right. So uh, it can be a little bit frustrating, real claustrophobic, but I mean, the movement, I, I don't know how Dark Souls is, but it really encourages you to play aggressively and cautiously at the same time. So yeah. you really want to do a whole you gotta, lot of ducking you gotta, and dodging to, between enemies. Yeah, you gotta take your rough. time. It's not even like roll up on a bunch of guys, hit them and back up. It's like jump in then you want to be whacking and dodging and then, and then, inside of the group literally like, that's how dark souls how are you supposed to predict and, that <laughs> it's so it's hard like you you can you can start understanding their their um what their, their movements their triggers look like right before they do right shit. Yeah. but even then it's still hard as shit because like even like when i roll away i still manage to get hit i don't understand how you, but you watch video game donkeys videos i know so you know how there are those things where he's standing near an edge of something and something hits him, an enemy hits him and he gets knocked off? Did you not see the clip that I sent you? I've been using... Yes, I did. That's I've literally been, what happened to me. I've been using that method on other enemies. So there are these big dudes, these big trollish looking guys with bricks. I don't know if anyone else calls it this, but I'm just calling him a brick troll for now. Mm-hmm. He has this giant... It's more like a cylinder brick. And he whacks you with it. He does a spin move with it. And so what I've been doing is when I encounter one of them, I go up to a ladder and I mount the ladder... And as soon as he goes to hit me, I slide down, and he always throws himself right off and dies whenever he falls. Right. Because he's so damn heavy. So I've been using that abuse. I've been trying, like, man. I've been trying. I've been really trying to get <laughs> past this one part. I think I'm going to have to run. Initially, that's what I did. Until I collected gear, 
Um, it's just they follow you. They keep following you. Oh, in this one, they stop at a certain point. For the most part. Even then, it'll get down to like where only one person follows you. I might you just have to seven. lure... Yeah, I might just have to lure them out. I think I... I know I'm gonna give it... I'm gonna give it a shot. Are you, you have Bloodborne downloaded? Yeah, I have it downloaded. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pop it in later. I'll show you where some of the, the armor and weapons are. It's pretty cool. And then, yeah. But it's fun. I really enjoy it. I didn't think I would. So, like, my birthday two years ago, I want to say it was, I bought it. I bought Bloodborne. And you and your boy advised me not to. And then I was like, yeah, I see why. So I got rid of it. Now that I have it, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to actually be patient, accept the fact that I'm going to lose a lot of uh, souls. Is it I'm the okay same way where, like, if you're dead, um, you, mm-hmm. have to, you have to restore your, your humanity? How do you mean? Like, is, is it like, your, does your life bar constantly keep going down the more you die? Oh, like the amount of life I have? Yeah. No, not that I've noticed. No, okay, yeah, because that's how Dark Souls is. It's oh, like, hell no. So when you, so, yeah. so th- th- that's what. I mean, that might be on like New Game Plus for PlayStation, maybe, but I don't know. That that's that's the the thing that is uh, it hurts mm. for Dark Souls is, yeah, you're gonna die a lot. You're gonna die a lot. So like, yeah, but, but you, then your actual health, your bar health, goes down. your health bar, which is what you need, is gonna that's keep getting stuff. drained. So the only way to get your health bar back all the way up is if you use a human effigy, which brings you back to life, and that restores your, your humanity. So I don't know how it is in Dark Souls, but in Bloodborne. So like when you're collecting stuff um, from you know all the random little ads, um, the two things that you always want to have a full amount of, which is 20, is blood vials for health. Yeah. Well, and yeah. then uh, quicksilver bullets for your guns, your flamethrower, things right. like that. And so when you've collected 20 of each, any surplus you get goes into your inventory, but you can't actually use it. So, like, if I do five shots, I can't pull five shots out of my inventory like Resident Evil or anything. Right, yeah. Those are for if I die, if I had five, it'll replenish me the full 20 of mm-hmm. each. So that, and it also goes for my health. So it'll actually give me my full health plus that 20. Right. So I, I'm assuming that Bloodborne is actually probably more helpful than hurtful compared it's, to Dark it's Souls. Prob- it's probably a lot more forgiving than Dark Souls. Maybe. I wonder if Dark Souls 3 took uh, the Bloodborne route or not. Because so, I think it came out a little after. Not long after, but like a Dark year Souls after. 3... Because uh, I think Bloodborne was a, P- a PS4 release title, wasn't it? Blood for- Bloodborne is an exclusive. I wouldn't say it's a release title, though. It wasn't a release title? Okay, I wasn't sure. No, Bloodborne came out... Let me see. PS4 dropped when, uh, when Call of Duty Ghost dropped. I know that. 2012. Bloodborne dropped in 2012? No, no. Bloodborne came out in 2015. Oh, three years. Saying, I'm, I'm, my, I, my bad. I'm saying... I don't know why I thought PS4, that was really PS4 dropped in 2012, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Dark Souls 3, I think... It, I want to say Dark Souls 3 came out in 2016. Let me see. But yep, a right. year later then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. So I've been playing... I've been playing a lot of Bloodborne, and I'm loving it. So now I can say, up to this point, having beat two bosses, which kicked my ass... I only beat two bosses, um, too. And, and I Dark actually Souls. wouldn't mind... Going back to last week's topic, if Hellblade had this level of difficulty, and I'm talking about the difficulty in combat, not necessarily the whole life, respawn yeah. lamps, all that, but just the actual that's what makes difficulty it, of fighting, I would like that in that's, Hellblade. That's sure. honestly what makes Dark Souls so stressful, is that you're only, the, you, you, this, the extra stuff. Getting the human effigies just to get your life bar back up, and, t- you know, it's like, you, you're constantly under that stress where it's like, shit, man, it's like, I don't. I. I'm not. I'm gonna run out of human effigies like this. Cause he, cause you could buy them at the at the shops. They cost like ten thousand souls. No, no, no it doesn't shit. cost that much. But there, oh, there's, okay. there's only a certain amount that they're selling at one time. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so it's not like you can just keep buying because you yeah. farm it or something. Um, okay. I might Damn. have to. I mean, I have, might have to look in different shops. You can also find them, but I just keep. I just keep getting wrecked. So, so here's the thing. Also with Dark Souls, um, if you kill an enemy a certain amount of times, and like you die. And then you go back, you know. Eventually, that that monster will disappear. Really? Yeah. So, because oh, you, because you wish. That's how you know you've been getting wrecked if there's no monsters left at all. Oh, that's them babying you. Yeah. Oh no, shit, not. Nah. Yeah. So far, I haven't. So seen far, that. I have I two. Wish. So so far, I have two enemies <laughs> that, that disappeared. That, that just disappeared. It's a little baby back bitch. In the one <laughs> spot that I can't get past, and apparently, and it it's not. It's not you. even. It's not even the hardest spot. It's not even the hardest part of the game. That's and great. Dark Souls Two is the easiest Dark Souls apparently. That's so funny. I uh, like. I need to figure. I need to figure it out. Maybe I need to like oh, play around with That's the so me- with the mechanics and all that other stuff. But it's not forgiving. That game is not a forgiving game at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
It's rough. Yeah. yeah, I've been playing a lot of Bloodborne. Loving it so far. I'm probably going to hate it by next week. We'll see. We'll see. And then yeah. I actually downloaded... Okay, so I'm this try, is going to sound really cheesy. I'm actually really trying to stick with those games just, to, just so I can beat it finally. This is going to be really cheesy, but I actually downloaded two games on my phone that were kind of neat. They're really unique to me because I never played them on my phone. Have you ever played simulators on your phone? Mm-mm. So, okay, so check this out. It's kind of cool, and I wish that, like a major company would take this and run with it because I think it's really cool. So it's like you download an app where when you tap on the app to play the game, mm-hmm. it opens up and it's a lock screen for someone else's phone. Right. And so the purpose of, of like the one was uh, you was you found this woman's phone and she's been missing. So when you open it up, like they're, the phone's version of a Siri is like a smarter AI than what like Siri is. Mm-hmm. And so it interacts with like, you're not Sarah. And uh, I think it's called Sarah's Missing or something. Sarah's Missing. And uh, it's like, you're not Sarah. Will you help me find her? Whatever, whatever. And it's like, this phone seems to have been deliberately damaged. I'll recover what I can. And so you're trying to find clues inside the phone, her phone, uh, through her apps, to find yeah. out what happened to her. And you're piecing it together. You end up finding out, like, uh, the occult is involved and all this stuff. And it's, kind of, and it's like a really neat experience. So you, can get pho- you can get phone calls from an NPC. You're texting with an NPC. That's it's, weird. It's, it's guided. That's, that's so strange. It's guided. You but know, like I can't say whatever cool, I want, but it's it's really a unique thing. Now it's it's very simple. It's not like I said. I can't say, f off. You know, swear word, but it's it, it's scripted. You can say this. You can say this. You can say this. Yeah. You know, um, and the different dialogues will lead on different paths. Some people might die. Some people won't. You can pick who dies. You can pick who won't. Um, that's pretty, like that. that's, so it's literally like a choice making game kind of like a telltale kind of but with more interaction and discovery if that makes yeah, any sense because it's strange. actually you doing the thing and so the second one that I downloaded it's similar but it's where you've gotten contacted by someone who's being held prisoner and then you get a contact from the person who's holding them prisoner and you're trying to track them down and they actually have this hacking uh, hacks where it's, Hex! I call Hex where uh, it's actually just a mini game that you play to quote hack things, mm-hmm. but then you use that that hacking ability that you unlock through a mini game um, to further the story. And so that one's taking me a little bit longer, but that thing scared me. That thing's terrifying. But uh, it's really unique, and I really wish like a major video game company would take this and run with it, because I think there could be some really neat detective games, some really neat horror games. Like a Resident Evil might be able to pull something unique off, mm. but you have to be wearing headphones though, because there can be some creepy shit that happens. Believe In the game not. that you're playing? Yeah. In the Sarah's Missing, there was like some random, like uh, the phone would glitch out and show like devil, not devil, but like demonic images that is like, oh my gosh, something's happening to the phone, you know, something to like scare you. And then you get a call from the occult guy and you'd be like, oh crap. You know, and, like my hair was standing on my neck and I was like, I don't want to be like this during my lunch break, man. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> But it's really Screw unique, and that, I dude. really hope that uh, that this can pick up. That, that can pick up on console. Not as big a cheesy way. No? It could, but there's something about it being on the phone that makes it feel more real. Cause like you could play like a walking sim where you do that, mm-hmm. and it'd be kind of like, you know, like uh, everyone's gone to the rapture type of feel to mm-hmm. it, which it was gorgeous to play, but it wasn't gripping with this because people spend so much time on their phones, it's natural to just keep going through the photos, keep going through the contacts, keep going through their texts mm-hmm. to find out. Housewives would love this game, actually, because you get to snoop through texts and phone calls. That's pretty dope. But, um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, what else have I played? Like I said, I, I put Destiny on the back burner. Um, I, I, I haven't been playing two games. I guess there was another one on console I was playing, but if I was, I can't remember it. Yeah. It wasn't important enough. But, yeah, that's pretty much for me. Bloodborne and, and cell phones Sick. at work. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try to keep up with Dark Souls and see if I can actually improve on it and get past the, those points because I really want to progress in it. Yeah, if you want to hop on Bloodborne later, um, just so you, I can show you like the initial stuff to help you uh, yeah. be a little stronger. That way it actually will be easier. Yeah, I'll give Otherwise it a you'll sh- suffer like I did. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. I'll even I'll even pull up Dark Souls and you'll, you'll see how Dark Souls is. God, no, I don't want nightmares. <sighs> yeah, anyways. Oh, oh, I remember the other things I mentioned real quick. Hmm. Even though I wasn't playing the game, I told you about this earlier in the week. I, in anticipation for the new God of War game, oh, I went man, I came God of War. and I pulled up uh, a, it's like a three hour and change video of all the cutscenes that pieced together the entire 
saga's story. Yeah. In preparation for for right. the new game. So it's like you watched the movie and, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much of all the ga- all, all the game's cutscenes, and so. I'm already like a fan of like lore, like mythology and stuff like that, and so to be able to watch this, I was like, I can't say I'm a God of War fan, but I'm gonna be. <laughs> you have for sure. Have you, played, have, you, have you played any of the? So good. Have you played any of the God of Wars? A little bit. That was on my PS3. Yeah, um, I had, Ascension, I, still, I think it was. Yeah, I still have it. But well, not, not Ascension. I have like the. My HDMI is shit on it. I can't even get it to work now. Yeah, that's, that's it sucks. Ass. That's ass. I don't think I can get it fixed. Otherwise, I would gladly. Play that. I was gonna say like yeah, I could just lend it to you. <sighs> yes, I'm. That, that's the other thing I was thinking of. That I'm. I watched all that, and I'm totally pumped for God of War. What is it? Technically, the fourth game. Well, it's would be number four. four. Yeah, it's got War Four. So that's gonna be. A, oh my god, I can't wait for that. That's gonna be so PlayStation. PlayStation good. is coming out with a lot of good games this year. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of good games this year. It's coming out. I can't wait for Last of Us Two. Uh, mm-hmm. Red Dead Redemption Two. Uh, I'm really interested to watch you play that one. I might get that if it looks. Really what is that? Is that only coming on PlayStation, right? Redemption. Uh, yeah, Red Dead. Possibly. If it is, and you recommend it, I'll consider getting it. Yeah. But I'm not going to get it. I have. Oh, hold on. I I bought. I, I didn't tell you. I, I bought the uh, the first one in the DLC. Red Dead Redemption. Oh yeah, yeah. Story, PS3. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Last you guys like. I you got to stream. You got to buy the I thing mean. so you could stream it for me. Yeah, I should buy a capture card. <laughs> Oh man, it's so much fun! It's basically GTA in the Wild West, GTA Four. God, that sounds GTA so cool. 5. Yeah, it's literally that's. You ever watch Junkie's rap video on it? No, I love that. I'm re- I'm I might have. I might, I might have. I might have. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so let's get on with our first topic, mm-hmm. and this one was one that you came up with. What game would you like to see made? I did. I came up with that. Yeah, the you came up with this one and that one. You came with that like the day after our last podcast. Oh, very well. <laughs> very well. Let's see. Did you already have something in mind you thought of that? I just thought about it like recently. Um, so obviously VR is becoming a thing, right? It's obviously not really optimized well. But I thought about it and I was like, well, something that they haven't done yet is classic fighting games like Mortal Kombat and Injustice, Marvel's Capcom. I'm talking about... Who? And VR. Ooh. Oh. The only thing that would be weird. Can you about imagine that? that? Can you imagine that? Like doing a fatality and just like doing like a freaking. So here's the thing. Are you talking like how they were back on 360 and PS3, or are you talking about how they are now? Because one thing I have noticed is with some of the older fighters like that, mm-hmm. you kind of had a little bit of map rotation, whereas the ones now are straight right. up, like head on. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so it's like head on. You, so for VR, would you want it to be where you strafe a little? Well, I mean, VR, it would be in a first person perspective yeah so would you want to just be going head on so the first person so, to be able to move around a little because so here's where it could it could where you you kind of have like an option to you can have just a regular mortal Kombat game right where you're just doing classic fighting like you know freaking head on type you know type deal like how injustice is mm-hmm. if you don't feel like doing vr or if you decide to put on the vr mode then, they give you then you could do the first person okay. the first person like head on like fighting you know thing you know it's kind of yeah. like if they can optimize that, I'd be fucking crazy. You know? God, can you imagine, like, like Injustice? Can you imagine being able to do uh, um, uh, Superman's ability? Or right? no, Supergirl's ability, where you punch him, you take him up, you go around the sun. Right, in first person. In first, oh, my gosh. Oh, dude, I want it so bad. Right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, my gosh. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying keep, <laughs> keep it restricted to where it's just a VR game. But give it like a VR mode where you can actually oh, enter the world like that. Kind of like, like how that. they did with that, uh, with uh, Resident Evil. Res 7, where they right. included it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh my where god. Where you don't have to technically do it in VR. You can but actually just there. play the game, but it's there for, you know, your convenience. I imagine so that would make people sick initially. It'd have to, that would have to be in some Well, time. If, you, if they optimize it well, because from mm-hmm. what I've seen so far with VR, the only good game that's optimized is Resident Evil 7. Well, I, aren't there some really good P, uh, PC ones? I, I mean, I've never, I don't own a VR, but I'm pretty sure there there's some decent ones. Yeah, that sounds amazing, dude. Yeah, that would be awesome. Like, I think oh that that's God. something that they haven't ever touched on as a fighting game. You know, they, they focus on shooters, mm-hmm. they focus on, like, all these, you know, other indie games. That are the same, more or less a carbon yeah. copy of something but else. But they haven't the graphics, really branched so. out to a fighting game where they give you that option to do a VR fighting game. And, and, and you know what? That actually might be a good workout, too. Because you're constantly moving. 
So my 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 game was uh, kind of in the same vein as yours mm -hmm. as far as VR goes, but it doesn't. The thing is, I didn't want it. In, I don't want it in VR. I want it to be just a normal game. Right. But that's in first person, which I guess could still be good in VR. But I want it to just be a regular couch game like normal, a first person where. So you played Skyrim, right? Yeah. I've I I, I've I, I haven't played, played I haven't played it too personally. too deep, but like I I've owned the game a million times already and barely got very so, far into it. With me, my only my issue with Skyrim, having watched people play it, I know I wouldn't like it in because VR. it's slow and it's more on the sluggish side, and I don't like that. And that's what I like about shooters is they, they're first person and they feel faster, they feel smoother, like how you would move if you were in a fight. If you were in a fight, you would never be trudging, you know what I mean, yeah. per se. But that's Bethesda so, games in general. For me, I would want, because, and so I chose this just because I am a Lord of the Rings nerd, but I would apply it to anything. Any type of a medieval, but like I said, Lord of the Rings, first person, but made by someone like Activision or Bungie where it moves faster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it doesn't have I that think, sluggish feel. I think that's you'd, li only, that's I think you'd I like want. Skyrim. I think I would too. I think you but would. I don't like how it moves. It's something you got to get used to, obviously. But, yeah. but Bethesda always has like those clunky controls, you know. But, but that's what makes it. That's what makes it. I don't know those games. Those games because it's just so funny sometimes. Some of the shit that happens. Some of you know the glitches what? that happens. You know what I want? First person Lego. Hmm. So I can literally do this. Just yeah, you could just buy a bunch of Legos and do it in real life. <laughs> right? you, know, you don't even need a VR for no, that. No, hell no, dude. If I just start throwing Legos up in the air and shit, it's just going to fucking fall around and get lost. You know, and you know, what'll make, choke you, on you, you know what'll make it realistic? <laughs> if you actually step on it, your, your guy gets hurt. Wow, I'm bleeding. I'm fucking <laughs> bleeding. What? <laughs> Honey, look at this blood. It's so real. Oh, that would be no. fucking great. No, honestly, for me, it's just I want to see better. I want to see more first-person games that aren't shooters that aren't clunky. So right. not just Bethesda, but I want to see other companies do it, you know? VR like in general is really just fast, all, they're, you all, know? they're all clunky-ass fucking I like games. That. I did the Doom demo, and I didn't like that I couldn't remap the controls. That's the only reason why I didn't actually get it. Because it was fast, and it felt good. But for me, I'm a sucker. I, I, I use the top bumpers for triggers. I don't like using the triggers for triggers. Why? I don't like the having to pull a button down like that every time I want to shoot. I like to just tap, 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 tap. I like to tap it. Tap, tap. that shit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so if the game doesn't read, doesn't map, I can't do it. But, um, yeah, honestly, I just want to see more first person stuff because the majority of games aren't first person. You know, you got all your sports games with third person, you got so many different types of third person, so many different genres, so many different art styles. How about a Madden I see game? All those other. Ooh. Madden game in VR. Here's my, here's my thing about that. Would you just be sitting there Cause I think, sprinting, cause but cause just with buttons like this? Because I think they have an, uh, an NBA 2K uh, VR experience. <laughs> Throw your controller by accident? Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> right in your TV? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Coach runs out, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the what fuck? fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Arm. Oh, God. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be ridiculous. You you have any idea how many controllers purrs would break? <laughs> Just he's what playing fuck, FIFA. He's, he's kicking his uh his coffee table. Fuck, dude. You'd have to fucking get everything away from people. Oh yeah. I think a Madden game would could work. I mean, they have Star Wars VR. Have you seen that? Mm -mm. It's a legit thing. They, so they got the headset like normal. And instead of using the, the makeshift controllers or, like, the Xbox controller that's split in half, they actually have a Star Wars thing with a little bit half of a lightsaber or so that's that, cool. you know, incorporates. I, was like, I thought that was really, really cool. So, I mean, they'll who, get there. Who makes it? Um, I don't know. It's PC. It's for PC. It's not for console. I don't think. But, um... Uh, if you think about it in, that, in those terms, you could do sports games with that if you had like a small hand size football that you put a strap on and it had the buttons for you to command so that you still had that feel. Mm. You could duck, it could sense that, you know? Mm -hmm. You got something like that. Basketball, I don't know about that, but certain, certain sports might be able to do that. It's possible. Kind of like that Guitar Hero guitar esque queer. thing. Yeah, Guitar Hero. Thanks, Hero. Okay, it could work. It's still fun. It could work. But yeah. Um, Aside from that, though, I mean, there's so much that's been made. There's nothing in particular that, like, 
I would want to see, you know? I mean, the only idea, and this is recycling someone else's off Revolver, would be to have a first-person shooter that could be placed anywhere in the world with, like, the Google engine, mm -hmm. you know? Go right outside your in your street and get online and play VR, shoot em up in your, in your street, mm -hmm. down at the mall, you know? But, and then you get shot because they think you have a gun. <laughs> no, it's in your house. Hopefully, no one, you're not getting swatted like that. He's killing someone at the wow, mall. Wow, I'm, I'm in the mall. <laughs> Fight. You're just actually in the mall. You're like, Fucking punching the shit out of people. reality. Like, oh, that was fun. Yeah. I got it. Oh, crap. I just really killed someone. Shit. He's, <laughs> he's dead. Oh, man. But, yeah. Um, let's see what our I next wonder topic why, is. I wonder why chat wasn't in my vision. <laughs> <laughs> see what our next topic is. Um, um, well, I, I like this one. This was your idea. I like this mm -hmm. one. What Marvel or DC character would you like to see have a game? I'm going with the Punisher. I thought you would say Wolverine. Punisher could thing is, they had a Wolverine game already. They did? Yeah. What was it? Uh, it came on the PlayStation 3. Oh. They couldn't make a more modern one. They can make a great one yeah. now. Because uh, do they have a Punisher game? I think about it. You remember that 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 first, uh, not first, but that first real Logan movie where it was, uh, it shows him, like, he has his bones and his brother. Remember yeah, that yeah. one? Can you imagine playing so, a realistic Sabretooth? video game of that one? Yeah. Sabretooth? They were in Vietnam. Well, they did all the wars together and stuff, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine playing that as a video game? You're escaping on the motorcycle. Yeah, that'd be oh, sick. They could, good. They could definitely get away with a modern Wolverine game. Like, in 2018? Right. Yeah. I mean, they could, but... There's so much modern stuff already. I mean, granted, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd still be good. The reason, they, they re reason I say they can get away with a Punisher game right now because Punisher is Hot huge. Topic. It's yeah. a hot topic. Here's the thing about that. Wouldn't it just come off as another Splinter Cell-esque kind of... Not saying that's slow and clunky and boring, but, like, wouldn't it just come off as another shoot-em-up? It could be. I Rambo mean, but it depends on the approach that they take it at. Like, if they do the John Brunthal Punisher... Or... No, I'm, I'm speaking more about mechanics and stuff. Like, how do you make the Punisher, that's a real-world type of entity... I would say how do you use make the, that a unique game? I would say use the Batman engine. Okay have that dark feel to it but have that batman engine you know does he i haven't watched the show i've seen the movies um nah, movie he doesn't do a whole lot of like sneaking so like no he doesn't do sneaking and he a lot of his stuff is very uh, up front like he doesn't do stuff where like something's happening in the room and he's not there and he and it's fucking people up it's always he's actually doing it right yeah so yeah yeah would it don't, don't you think it'd feel kind of like a call of duty game you push up you clear the next room you push up you clear the next room yeah, it can be, but it or depends. It, 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 it all depends. Yeah, it could be Hitman esque. It could all hopefully it, more action packed. It that. all depends on like the approach that you take it at because there's endless possibilities. Especially it's it's especially becoming like a superhero game. It's all it's all touchy touchy type of type of feel because literally the Wolverine game is like a hack and slash, you know. So and then you have like Batman, which is kind of like a hack and slash too, minus hack and slash minus, with minus, some minus. sneaky sneaky. Yeah, basically. I'd say, like, for me visualizing it, if you were to make the Punisher, as far as, like, for close combat goes and, and his and shooting goes, be as free-flowing and smooth as possible. Mm -hmm. Like, not at all clunky. Like, Bethesda couldn't do it. Well, no. Fuck if no. you had him really feeling smooth and really feeling like he's quicker than everyone else, like, almost like that's a superpower, even though he's a normal guy, if you gave it that kind of a feel and you let the ads not be predictable... I think that could be really fun. They can also, you have predictable ads, it'd be boring as shit. Also, if... Mafia 3 is pretty much the Punisher. Oh, there, there you go. That's fair. Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they, they can get away with it. I mean, and if they had John Bernthal, like, actually narrate it, that'd be awesome. Because John Bernthal... Even if Wolverine did it and he had, uh... uh Hugh Jackman? Goddamn, yeah. No, yeah. I'd be happy if he came up, like, a little... FaceTime image on the side, no shirt, and was like, and he narrated it like that. I'd be like, thank you, Hugh. <laughs> thank you, Hugh. <laughs> Have you seen that dude freaking, like, voice act and shit? Oh, man, it's, he gets so many. He's so like, ridi oh, it's he's ridiculous. in the recording, he's like, yeah. screaming. Oh, it's so yeah, good. Yeah, so if they, had a modern, if they had a modern Wolverine game, he could definitely pull it off. He'd now have now to. that he's no longer Wolverine, he'd it's have, like. They'd have to get motion capture on him. They got to. They can't get so, let someone it's else like, do it. Can't. He knows exactly how to really get in the role and mm -hmm. how he would move. 
It's kind of like uh, Kevin Conroy's Batman. No one else can actually capture Batman like him. No one else can capture Wolverine. Like, if they do another X-Men and they have another dude playing Wolverine, everyone's going to hate him. Yeah. After how good he is, everyone will hate him. That's And, and that's the... That's the curse of being a superhero actor. Like when you start, like not not start off because obviously Hugh Jackman has been played. He's played many. He's played many that. many yeah. roles before that. But my favorite movie with him was that one chick for the Kate and Leopold. He is such a stud. You ever seen that? <laughs> <laughs> John Bernthal could do whatever he wanted to me, and I wouldn't even call the cops. I don't care, <laughs> dude. I, that's my dude. John Bernthal is my <sighs> my favorite modern actor of like of today. Like. Like how Leo is, and like how you know, uh, freaking uh, yeah, yeah. Robert De Niro and everything. To to John Bernthal is probably the next biggest thing in my opinion. Maybe. I feel like, and and the thing is, he's he's been doing a lot of shows. I mean, he's been doing movies too, but I feel like he can have he can have that role. Like he can have that main role. What's that iconic line that he says? One bitch, two bitch, penny and damn. He's the best, dude. I got you cornered. He's awesome, man. I'm telling you, he he you can you can put that dude in any movie or or show, and he will kill it. I I like, challenge like that. When, I challenge that. Back when, to the future. He could he could fucking play, fucking Emmett Brown. <laughs> fucking still kill it. <laughs> fucking yes, man. Marty, Bruce, why the fuck did you take my car, you Bruce, no! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I as soon as I saw him in The Walking Dead, I already knew he was gonna be he was gonna be like a huge actor. Just his based on, yeah, based on yeah. his performance, because they kept him around for two seasons, because he was supposed to die early. Yeah, according to comics, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah he he, dies, he like dies in the sixth comic, but they kept. Really, that's yeah. him. Oh, wow. He dies really soon. And his performance is great. Yeah, he's kind that's of eccentric, why, but he's like. But that's why they kept him around. That about him. That's why they kept him around till season two. At the end of season two, because of his acting and the ratings are going up because of it. So speaking of actors who get stuck in a role or who can't be appreciated after, you know they're coming out the new Hellboy, right? Are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could do a Hellboy game. You know who's doing the new Hellboy? Who's playing as Hellboy? Hmm. So you know who did it before, right? Ron Perlman? Okay, yeah. The guy who's doing it now is the guy who plays the sheriff in uh, Stranger Things. No. Yes. He's, he's doing that? Yeah. I'm actually really pumped They're about it. They're hot? Mm-hmm. I'm really excited for it, actually. He's been getting jacked for it, dude. They, they There was a, a image that went out of... Uh, how he looks so far, just with some of the the Hellboy look. Yeah. I was like, holy crap, this dude is Because, you know, like, in, in that, he has a dad bod, straight up. Straight dad bod, yeah. You yeah. know? Now, he's, like, legit, like, not, he's not Hugh Jackman status, but he's, like, baby Hugh Jackman. I can't know? picture that dude jacked as shit, though. He was jacked. Like, not jacked, like, you know, like I said, not like Wolverine, but he's, like, fit. He's got abs. He's got definition, you yeah. know? But he's also a big guy, so it actually worked real I'm really excited to see him play as... Uh, that's Hellboy, man. That's, and I hope they that's put crazy. a serious spin on it, not do that goofy shit they did for which I did enjoy. But yeah. I hope they take it seriously. Uh, they can get away with a Hellblade game, too. No, Hell, Hellboy, wow. Hellboy, like, oh, Hellboy, Hellboy oh, game. I love that, dude. I mean, when I saw that they threw him in Injustice, yeah. I was like, oh, man, he needs a game. Because he, he's got that supernatural ability to jump places and do huge leaps. And, mm-hmm. I think that would be a lot of fun. Tank and stuff. I've oh. always found games just jumping across the map so much fun like how they never made a good hulk game how they i mean maybe it was just at the time and game engines for consoles yeah i i I beat that game just just for the trophies (laughs) i beat it so Mm. long ago though i mean it was fun though it was a lot of fun i liked hopping around the map and shit like that just destroying shit it was so much fun it was definitely an underrated game in my opinion uh what else what else could like the ultimate spider-man game when you got to play as venom so much fun. I just liked hopping oh, around. Really? I yeah, love yeah. hopping around. What do you think about around. the new Spider-Man game that's coming out? Have you seen the footage for that? Thoughts on new Far Cry. I loved Far Cry 3. I haven't played any other Far Cry after that. I've watched a lot of people play it on Twitch because, like, watching it's interesting. I played some of Primal. Yeah. And uh, I'm a little nervous with... I'm not nervous, but I'm a little apprehensive about how they're going to approach the topic. Because you know the topic, the theme they're going with, right? Mm. I I, I, like have, I actually redneck. haven't seen any of the any of the trailers for the new Far Cry. Okay, no spoilers. This is like no. Yeah. It's basically they're going for like a uh, redneck, uh, um, heretic mm-hmm. themed thing. So you're trying to get through this fucking hick town. Okay. And escape, and it's like, it, it's gonna delve delve some you can pretty keep raunchy coffee. topics from what it looks like. Yeah. And so, I'm a little nervous about how they're gonna approach that and still keep it. 
where you're still there to have fun and wreck. You know what I mean? Without it being too serious of a tone, does that make sense? Right. But, I mean, it's Far Cry. They'll find a way. See, one of the things I loved about Far Cry 3 was Moss. The character? Uh-huh. I loved his performance. Oh, okay. And I, I, I just thought it was a great game overall in, in the sense where you had you had that open world feel to it, but you and, but you also had that that linear storyline where it was just going to lead to one specific thing. You already know what you were going to do. You just got to get all the outposts and stuff like that. So, I mean, I was never, like, big, big on Far Cry, but Far Cry 3 was a masterpiece, in my opinion. And that's the piece. That's the piece. I don't know. If I had to see a... Going back to the topic, if... Uh, good uh, good question on the Far Cry. Yeah, um, I, I haven't seen any of the new footage. I should probably look it up. Yeah, it's it's very it's. I don't think they have gameplay out yet, which is gonna look the same as everything else. But uh, they've at least uh, had some trailers. Um, I think Marvel or DC characters ha having a game, so I would be interested to see a Superman just to see what they do. But I don't see that Didn't being very fun. A, they had a Superman game. They had a horrible one on like the sixty four. Oh yeah, that was old school though. That yeah. Was so but today, I don't know how well that would play out because anything that you fight that's of Earth, you're just going to destroy. Yeah. And if everyone has a kryptonite gun, it'll be boring as hell. And then at the same time, you don't want to play just an alien invasion, you know? So I don't really want to see a Superman game, but I'm going to say it again like I did last week. I want to see Dr. Fate, man. I want more magic. Incredible. Oh, they have gameplay? Okay. I have to, I'll have to look it up later for sure. We'll talk about it again next week. I'll actually put it down as a topic yeah, for next yeah, week. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, let me type that in, actually. Um, F-A-R-C-R-I. Screw it. Um, but I want to see that. I, I'd want to see some Dr. Fate, man, because there's not enough, like, there's a lot magical... Of, even a Doctor Strange I'd like to see, too. There's a lot of there's not enough mythical yeah, shit in, the, in, there's in gaming. There's a lot of underrated superheroes that don't even have a game in. Mm-hmm. A good game, at least. A good game, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The best one, obviously, is Batman, but that's no surprise. Oh, this Spider-Man one? I have high hopes for it. I think it'll be good. It as looks, long as they don't have loot boxes, great. it'll be tits. It looks great. For sure. Um, like I said, man, they need a Wolverine game, for sure. Um, God, can you imagine how boring a Flash game would be? Everything would just be a timed mission. What's that? <laughs> Can you imagine how horrible a Flash game would be? Everything would just be a timed Next mission. Let's talk about the role music scores play in video games. Hmm. Role music scores? Music scores. Yeah. Oop, I'm going to move this down. I already know what, what game I'm going to reference. Shit. Because it had some great scores. But yeah, I'll save that for next week for sure. Um, nope. uh, I, I think the Flash game would be good. You think so? I think that'd be garbage, man. Why? Because Imagine it's just running is all you're going to do. It, I think it's going to play like this. You remember that, um, I forget which one it was, but do you remember that uh, X-Men movie with that kid who runs real, real fast? Um, he was played by that one young guy. He's like a really big name star. Um, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? about? He, always, he wore the glasses, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I imagine it just be like that. You're moving so fast that you're actually moving slow, and everything around you is moving super, super slow. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you're doing things like running and pushing. Like I don't know. Man. Well, yeah. I mean, or it'll be a timed objective: run across the city and save well, so I mean, and so, and then do this, and then do that, and then stop this truck all within two and a half minutes. It could be like. I don't see it being fun. I would like it to be fun, but I. I, I, I it. it could. They could make it fun, but it's more of a. I feel like they they would have to figure out how to do it right. You know what I'd like to see? It's not a superhero game, super villain game. I would like to see a Gotham villains game, where you could pick the, like a you, could game? Pick, you could pick the villain you want to be, and you're running their underworld in first or third person, running the mob, getting to mob wars, leading your men, building your mob. I like to see that. Actually, I think that'd be more fun than another superhero game to me. Like a villain game. Is there? Like I mean, spiders? you have like mafia and things like that. But you don't have the eccentric craziness that you can have with a specific figure that suicide can do squad, extra shit. Like a Suicide Squad game, but like, like an actual Suicide Squad game, not a freaking Jared Leto. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much Mafia? Yeah, no, no, not Mafia. I'm saying, that's what I'm saying though, because that's the thing that I don't care for playing things like Mafia and, and uh, GTA is 
it's too realistic. Now, yeah, you can down, you do the cheat codes and mods to whatever. But I'm talking like where you have these characters who can do things like in those superhero games where they can do, you know, like Batman can do abilities. He can do, uh, you remember Arkham Knight? He could do the uh, multi-fear takedown. It takes one guy down, you hit square after you lock on another target and you, and you zip over to him and you take, you know. You can do really neat stuff with these villains. And it doesn't even have to be Batman villains, to be honest. It could be, you know, Brainiac. You could be Venom. doing so. You could be Venom, you know. <clears throat> Venom right. should have his own game. That could be fun. Have the next Spider-Man game be a Venom game, then have the third game be the two of them going head to head. Because it's it's also like the first time that a, well, actually not Suicide Squad is technically a, a villain movie, but yeah. Venom, you know, like he's getting his own movie in September. That's right. That's so right. it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what other what other movies do you know that? No, uh, I, I won't. I can't watch Gotham. You know that. It's no, dude, too, I love Gotham. Too not too off canon. I can't do it, man. It it pisses me off. Oh yeah, yeah. He's the guy. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, you know who he is, right? Yeah, he's from. Um, Shameless. Shameless, there you go. Yeah. He plays the gay brother. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude, dude, it's great. Yeah. Like, they haven't announced him as the actual Joker per se yet. They just call him Jerome. No, but he's in there and he yeah. he's clearly the he Joker. He has he's clearly the Joker. Yeah. yeah he, he's in development. But he's it's crazy cuz like um I don't I don't know if they they restarted the second half mm-hmm. of the season of season 4 yet. I don't know if they have yet. Mid season finale. Yeah, yeah, they had yeah, I think it comes out in April, the other mid season finale. Um but yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He plays. Oh, the- really? He's in Hatfields and McCoys. I need to watch it. <laughs> Retarded. <Hatfields. laughs> you plays a pickleball boy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, dude. He's a great, great actor, and he's yeah, a he he's is. a great For Joker. Being as young as he is, you yeah. could you could tell that he took obviously um, the notes from he- uh, Heath Ledger. Oh, really? I, he- I'll give it. I'll give it a, a skim through. I'm not gonna sit down and watch all of it though, because it'll. No, I, I, dude. I honestly like. If you don't look at it as like, even if you don't look at it as like a Batman show, it's just a good show in general. It's just a really good show. I consider giving another shot. It is a really good show. Like, don't try to beat Bloodborne because I need to pay attention with that one. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, but especially because <laughs> you're a Batman fan, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, a Batman fan. But like, don't go go in with it with an open mind. Yeah, don't I got you. don't be like, no, this doesn't happen. This is stupid. You know, like, <laughs> look at what, it. What's Penguin so old? <laughs> no, Penguin is young as shit, and he's skinny. Yeah, he's not close to Bruce Wayne's age. But, yeah, but that's, that's why I was joking. But, I'm joking. I'm joking. But I'm if you want to be, if, if if you want to, if you want to be realistic, the Telltale series doesn't really go off. The okay, Lord of the Cube, I'll watch it. Lord of the Cubed. I know that's my brother. Uh Rubik's cubes. Lord of the Pubes. Lord of the Pubes. Pew 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 pew. pew. All right, you want to go to our next topics? Yes. So the next two. Well, let's go with the next one, and then we'll move it into the, ne- the one after. So, PlayStation, parting ways from PS3 and Vita. What do you say now? Ha! <laughs> parting ways from PS3 and Vita. So, I was going through some some uh, gaming news stuff, mm-hmm. and I saw, I read two things that caught my interest. One was that PlayStation Plus, if you've been paying for that, which you and I have been, mm-hmm. you get free games every month for PlayStation, PS3, right, and, and Vita. Vita, yeah. And VR, actually, lately. They incorporated that about, within the last six months, they incorporated free uh, PSVR games. Yeah, yeah. Which are all garbage, but still. Whatever, it's free. They're doing it. Oh. So, um, they're, they, they've been doing that, and they just announced that this month, March, is the last month where they're doing all that. From this point forward, they're for just going to be doing... Uh, for Vita? For... So, Starting next month, they're only going to do free games uh, if you have PlayStation Plus 4. 4 and VR. PS3 and PS Vita are no longer getting free games. Why? And also, they announced their new PlayStation Gold headset. So, the first one was marketed specifically towards PlayStation 4 and the PS Vita. Which, why you would use a headset like that on a Vita, I don't know. But... You can, but it was marketed towards that. The new one that they're doing has new upgraded features specifically tailored to and marketed towards PS4 and PSVR. Mm-hmm. So I think they're trying to really, and this all happened within the same, within a week. So I think they're very clearly trying to define that, okay, we already stopped making games for the both of them a long time ago. We're moving on. And how do you feel about that? Do you feel like, they're, like they should still be catering with free stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If, especially because 
they haven't thought of a new uh, Vita yet. You know what I'm saying? They haven't thought of a new... Well, and, you know, I don't think they will because of the Switch, but mm-hmm. if PlayStation really wants to try to compete with the Switch... I don't think they are because no no other console is competing with them for VR. I think that's where they think they have their edge is with the VR. Because uh, Xbox well, isn't doing it, even though they could, but they're not going to. They, like, that, that's because they have PC. And exactly, PC. But for people who aren't like me in the past, can't afford a PC or aren't able to afford a PC where they are willing to invest in basically experimental technology, right? Not if experimental per se, but it's, people, it's young. If you people know? are gonna sink five hundred dollars into an Xbox at One X, they can sink. They can get a PC. Oh, I agree completely. Which is why I haven't bought an Xbox One X. <laughs> if I was going to, I'd absolutely you'd, get a yeah, PC you should, so I could be ready for VR when it be, when it gets you good. Sh- people should be putting that money towards a PC because a PC realistically you don't you don't you don't have to get a thousand dollar PC. You can spend five hundred dollars oh, yeah, and get a pretty decent PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's that and. Uh, so do you think uh, how soon do you think it's going to be because I don't you were you've been gaming longer than me so you might have a better gauge if they're as far as if they end up repeating themselves yeah. time wise but when do you think they're going to officially cut off the servers for PS3 as I can tell you right now this th- because th- they just recently like a couple of years ago actually I want I need to find out when th- they did it it was in the last five I think well then no it was the last five they they, they shut down the PS2 online servers I think so I don't think it I want to say it's last year I don't year. think it was longer than that last year okay yeah I, I know it was last re- year, more recent two years, yeah. which if you so remember correctly then, PS2 though. online came out in like let's see PS2 online I think came out in 04 give or take so yeah, over ten years. So and then uh, we already established it came out in two thousand twelve. So do you think we'll? Well, that was when PS four came out. So PS three came out. Uh, when did PS three come out? PS three came out in two thousand six. Two thousand six. So mm-hmm. in that case, we should be seeing, in theory, PS three servers getting shut down within the next two, maybe three years. Then, do you think that's too soon, or do you think that's? It's, it's I feel like lived long enough. I, I feel like they can they can manage to keep it uh, keep, the, keep the servers up for a little bit longer. Do you think it's worth keeping up? Do you think there's enough player base there? So I can tell you this is actually kind of random. Check this out. I hopped on about about a month ago. I hopped on my PS3 when the USB happened to be working. Popped in Arkham Origins. Remember what was unique about Arkham Origins? Mm-hmm. Multiplayer mode. Oh, that's right. That did have multiplayer mode. And I very quickly got in matches actually. Full, full lobbies. That's what I'm saying. People, some people still don't want to buy a PlayStation Four. People, I've had, I like, I had my PlayStation Two. Another. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know what happened to it now, but I had it for a while before I even got a PlayStation Three. So how long after? Because they stopped making games for a console, should they keep those servers running? You think? Because they just stopped making games. I'd say right about Black Ops Three. I don't think they kept making games after Black Ops Three, and even then, they only dropped the multiplayer. They didn't give uh, the full game. Because, yeah, PlayStation 4 is already almost on that verge of going towards next generation, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because the lifespan usually for consoles are around six years per console. Well, in that case... PlayStation 1 came out in 1994. PlayStation 2 came out in 1999. Uh, PlayStation 3 came out in 2006. And then PlayStation 4 came out in 2012. So every six years they drop a new console. So about this year we should get a five in theory. Realistically, but I I actually saw but this week I read an article that it might not come out till twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one due to PlayStation. You don't need uh, to hardware being. You solid. don't you don't need a new console. Why? No, we don't. And here's the thing: Have you heard about this? Is something I thought of putting as a topic, but I figured we'd dip into it. Have you heard about what the next generation of consoles might be? What? Stream boxes. Stream boxes. What the fuck is that? Just a console that streams the games kind of like Netflix and all that kind of like Netflix Xbox's uh, Spotify what is it the Play Pass or whatever essentially and uh, that said Google is creating their own game box that is going to be a stream box definitively I yeah. heard rumors I forget though what the details were that Apple is going to attempt to get into gaming which odds are they'll get in a stream box because they're already doing that stream Apple thing where you pay for whatever for to stream music because you don't instead of buying the reason i say is because a lot of people have now just recently bought a 
Xbox or PlayStation 4. It's still very new to people. And people still have the con- the traditional concept of purchasing a hard copy. Yeah. I On top of that, it's like, I feel, I feel like you should only be coming out with a console if... You feel like you can get surpass that specific console. Exactly. If you're bringing, if they if they just they, they just recently came out, with, they were just recently came out the pro. Why would you drop the pro? Yeah. Even the pro wasn't that much of an upgrade. It's not. Thankfully. So it's, it's like not. they really just kept the same PlayStation more or less. Basically, and it's like why why would you need another console when you just drop the pro, and it's already Here's perfect the, the way it is. Unless like do you think they're they're going to be able to drop a console that can do not what a PC does. But something like past significantly stronger 60, than we have now. Sixty frames per second. Yeah. Which I don't know how they haven't thought of that. Have that? How they haven't done it yet? Well, even then, the Xbox One X's that they it has. Uh, does that? It, it only has sixty frames for certain games, though, doesn't it? Not everything. Yeah. So it's like. I know Dragon Ball Xenoverse Two was the first sixty frames per second game. For console. consoles. It can't be surprising though, because the art style alone, it can't be that strenuous. Right. Right. Yeah. But it's it's not it's not every day you get to see a a uh, console surpass sixty frames per second. I guess it's still kind of new in that field. So if they were to do that, well, okay. So aside from sixty frames per second, what else would need to be introduced with a console to it's, make it they, a they, next gen console? Too? Right. The, what, I mean, what would be on your list of next gen says, requirements? Because I'm at that point. Because we're at the point now where it's like, how far can you really go with graphics? Mm-hmm. You know, that, well, I, feel, I feel like yeah, PC. PC, but so it's like, how close can you reasonably get with a PlayStation? Like, if you were to just, if you were asked by PlayStation, and Microsoft, what do you expect to see in next gen console? What would you put on that list? Sixty frames, given. Definitely, yeah. Um. I, I feel like every console should have that streaming capability as far as streaming games. Kind of like a Netflix subscription. The you know PS I mean? Now, yeah. the Xbox uh, Play Pass or whatever. Is that so, me? No, somebody's calling me. They're FaceTiming. Oh. Um, I mean, I, honestly, like, I, it's, I can't... Not a whole lot, right? There's not really a, lot, a whole lot because PlayStation... Then the price would... The price would be up jacked up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And at that point, you might as well get a PC. So it's like there's really there's really only so much you could possibly do to even improve that console, unless they have something up their sleeve where it's actually revolutionary. Like holy shit, this is a this is a whole new thing, which they, I'm pretty sure they will. But can you imagine streaming in VR and then it starts buffering and you're just like, oh my god. They, they still have they still have to master VR before they like oh, you know what I'm saying. I mean, that'd be rough. That'd fuck people up. Yeah, they st- they still have to uh, master VR. Um, yeah. But, like, there's really... I feel like it's the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One X. It's not your typical console where you need to have it dropped every every uh, five, six years. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You, they, can, they can go a longer lifespan without having to... And games, the way games you know? are coming out today, too, they, <clears throat> they can easily be where uh, instead of coming out with a new game, you can build oh. expansions, WoW style. You yeah, know what I mean? Hold a second. My, my, my boy wants to see himself in the podcast. <laughs> he's like, yo, he's like, I want to see myself in the podcast. <laughs> Who that? This is my boy, Alex. Hi, Al. Oh. We just got, we got a call from our podcast, our uh, first call. Uh, look, you're our first you're, caller you're our first ever. caller. <laughs> is it on is, is right now? Yes. Ask me a question on the podcast. Uh, I don't know, like, what kind of question. I know, we didn't prepare how, for this, dog. How, how long is your penis? It's not impressive. Uh, it's not. Three feet high and rising. I like it. Very good. Are you good watching it right you, now? Sir. I was, wa- I was watching <laughs> it, but my connection sucks balls because I'm in the car. Doesn't he look but like that guy who played oh, as a skatester? Like no, he looks like. Doesn't he look like? He him? looks like Ramsey Snow. No, I mean I can see what you're saying that he looks more like the dude from X Men who was a speedster in that one. Oh That's yeah, what he yeah, looks yeah. like. Evan Peters. Evan Peters. You know, he knows, he knows, yeah, he knows yeah. all the names. Jesus, he knows all the names to people. I can't wait to see him as a, a develop as an adult actor. He's a good ass actor. Yo, everybody watch Code Red Podcast. Enjoy it. Woo hoo! Who is? <laughs> All right, dog. Um, I just That's I don't know, cool. but I I don't know like, where, like what where can you possibly go now with these consoles? What yeah. what else can be revolutionary? 
You know, like you got to start taking a lot of you. Got, you got to start taking a lot of pop culture things and applying it to that those consoles now. Picture this: you got your console sitting out, right? Because you know they're all VCR shaped, right? They're boxes, so you have that out. For the for build this specific, make it like a streamer or YouTuber edition console specifically, mm. where on top you have a burner, so you can keep your coffee warm. So you can make your breakfast. I mean, there's nowhere else you can go, man. What, what, what the fuck toast. is this? A fucking make goddamn toast? goddamn kitchen? There's nowhere to go. Like everything's been done, man. Fucking Barbara Streisand PlayStation. <laughs> as long as it doesn't come with the nose, you'll be fine. I mean, not Barbara Streisand. Uh, was it uh, Martha Stewart? There we go. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I thought of Barbara Streisand. Uh, Paula Deen. The secret to deep fried butter. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have some more skinny and butter for uh, for the your games. Healthy dose of margarine, delicious. We're gonna have more. We're gonna have more butter than skinny. Um, not like there's nothing you can do. I mean, like I, like I said though, unless as of right now, those as of right PS, now, or those uh, PC quality features. They, you know. See, the thing is, they can get away with waiting a little bit longer because I didn't get my oh, yeah. I didn't get my PlayStation Four until 2015. These things are still powerful as shit. Yeah, I they're mean, still uh, fairly, fairly new. Yeah, our, our VR consoles at the same time. They're still... I mean, mine's breathing heavier than yours is, but... <laughs> it's literally going to... heavy. <gasps> literally. All the Stop time. playing Destiny on me! <laughs> this game is ass! Actually, believe it or not, <laughs> believe it or not, I'll play Destiny, and it'll be pretty quiet. If I switch over to Hellblade, it goes, Ah, what <laughs> is this? Help! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> this game is so slow! Oh god! Mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't know, man. It, I just like it's because the thing is with me, I don't buy the consoles right away. Yeah, because they and always there are a lot come of people out. That don't, because but they, by now, if you haven't bought the current gen console, right, you're only hurting yourself at this point because they're not making games for you anymore. Mm-hmm. As someone who's in the past still on last gen consoles, you're just hurting yourself. Yeah, you're just not one to pay for PlayStation Plus, and if you're paying for PlayStation Plus and you're still on last gen. What are you doing? It just sucks, man. That, that and you're about to lose your free games. It just uh, it honestly sucks though that they went the whole route of paying for online, like they were it's mandatory for you to play online. I think the only reason they did that was because the PS3 was so garbage that they needed to do something. That's to the keep reason up with why. Xbox. That's the reason why it was free is because the servers were shit. I mean, as far they as like justify charging them. As far as like the whole uh, chat system went, it's like you couldn't even like get into like a party or anything like that. It was kind of whack. You know, so it's like... When I discovered that, when I first bought my PS3, I was like, wait, so how do we chat? Oh, it's only in-game. I'm like, what? Yeah, it's stupid. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I can't play no game. It's like, nope. It's like Xbox 360 already mastered that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's an older system. You would have thought, like, oh, well... You would have thought they would have come out with, like, the PS3 Pro that had that feature, you know? (laughs) I just think, think, like, coming out with, like, the Slims and the PS3 Pros and stuff like that. I mean... Coming, coming out like a slim, slimmer PS3 is There's the same no, console. No you know, it's the same it, console, you know, it's but it's like, why are you gonna come out? A, a, why are you gonna come out with another console that has better graphics than the console you already like, bought? I could understand when they came out with the slim PS2 because did everything the old PS2 did, but was significantly smaller. smaller. That's actually, it. significantly smaller. Yeah. You know, uh, she just got a 360. What, what? is it? Ni- 1995. <laughs> what is it? 1995 over here, bro. I mean, she probably paid like 50 bucks for it, so fucking kudos to her. Yeah, shit. She's trying to figure out why her Apple headset doesn't fit in the controller. I can't wait to play some video games online. Nobody's online. Can't wait to watch Netflix. Oh. That's probably why she bought it. Too big a memory file. That's probably why she bought it. I honestly, mean, she should have bought an Xbox One. Games are cheap as fuck. Yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. But I, that's I, honestly, she's like, not going to find anyone to play with unless she's playing single-player games. Unless she, she's yeah, I mean, I mean, if she plays single-player games, that's, that's totally understandable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So like she's even just, then you get it, your halos it, and all that. And she's shit just too. gonna use it for Netflix and like, and like just. Oh, like we're, we're stereotyping that like, she's not a gamer girl too. Granted, she's late in the game, but it could be that like she got poor private life, <laughs> army chick. <laughs> well, uh, you should on. you should have helped her. I helped you buy a PS4. She cheap. could. How much did she pay for on, Xbox honey. 360? Good did, lord. Did, did she know? Did, I mean, does, does she know? Do, do you know how the, much she the, paid? English is terrible. It is. Because it's the she, hardest language. If she paid more than a hundred dollars for that, she might as well. Have... But she's also physically responsible. Fiscally. Fiscally. 
there's nothing fiscally irresponsible about going with what is current because everything is going down in price. If she gets the first Listen, generation's she could, current she, gen, she could have got cheap. She could have gotten an Xbox One S at the exchange for about one hundred eighty nine, two hundred dollars. Even then, forget the S. Just go with the Xbox One. She and paid like boom. sixty dollars, and every game is under five dollars. Yeah, but. I mean, it, if she's a total gamer girl, then odds are she's going to be playing something competitive or a shooter or something or multiplayer. But I mean, it makes not sense. Judge. It makes sense oh, for there. She plays all single player games. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's okay, fine. But then. and you got all your Halos and shit. That's I fine. But, any PlayStation but I mean, exclusives that are a big deal for short t- for short term. Short term, it makes sense. But it's like Bioshock, Skyrim. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's fine. But I mean, for short term, it's like. It's it's great, but you could have put those sixty dollars towards a one S, an Xbox One S, and you could have gotten you know the most current gen console. You know? And a lot of those games are remastered, anyways, so it still wouldn't hurt. So, but I mean, yeah, for, for those specific reasons, you know, she likes Skyrim and Bioshock. Yeah, and that's that good. Make, good that for makes her. sense. No, I mean, I mean, makes complete that's sense. Good. But she should seriously consider just going for just the base model, Xbox One or PS Four. Let's cheap see how much as hell, it costs. and then games for that. I mean, the games are still the current games, so I mean, you can still get those cheap. You still get fine, you know, those Facebook deals where they're selling a bunch of games for five bucks, you know, twenty or like thirty games for twenty bucks, whatever. Let's see, Xbox One. But you want to move on to the next topic? Let's start moving that way. Let's do it. All right. So, an key, Xbox One S is two twenty on Amazon, but that's 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 to say if it's not cheaper in stores. And that's new, not used. So I mean, you can get them used, you know, perfectly good prices. Custom editions or uh, special editions, you know. Re- refurbished. Exactly. All the custom controllers Xbox and headsets one. that go with it. First gen. So let's see what the first gen costs. Uh, they're not showing them. Hmm. I'm sure they have them in stores, though. Yeah. The, either way, you could just get the 1S. It's a lot. Ch- you can get it cheaper and refurbished. But so, PS1 reboots. Um, so, games that they have already rebooted would be Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot Ratchet, and um, Clank. Ratchet and Clank, but that was more like a, almost like a re, uh, not reboot, because like they completely redid it. It's not like they upgraded the way it looked. Um, yeah, they're, you know, uh, they're rebooting Spyro. They're, exactly. And Dan, you'll recognize this, uh, maybe, from the demo discs that we had on PS1, Medieval, or med- Medieval. That one I'm actually really excited about because I wished I'd, I could have played that game because it was just kind of wacky and looked kind of fun. But Spyro I'm actually really excited to play because since we only have the demo of that one, I actually wanted to play that because I love fake shit. You know, what us, you know what us Resident Evil fans have been waiting for, right? What are you waiting on? Resident Evil 2, god damn it. You haven't redone that one? No, they've been oh. saying it's in the works for like the past a million years. Maybe they're going to do the uh, Final Fantasy VII thing where... Uh, we're gonna redo it, but it's so much stuff that we can't fit on one disc. So we're gonna put it on a season pass. We're gonna put it on yeah. a season what, pass. What's his name? Boogie. Boogie. <laughs> that, he had a great video on that. But uh, what other PS One games would you like to see reboot other than, of course, Metal, Metal Gear and Resident Evil Two? Obviously. See, the thing is, they they remastered technically Metal Gear Solid One on the GameCube. It's called Twin Snakes. Oh really? But they changed up like some of the music and shit like that. And, oh. I mean, I, I haven't played it yet because I, I never owned a GameCube, which I'm really tempted to. But even if I owned a GameCube, you'll never play it. No, not that's th- like your Steam. No, 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 no. If I bought, if I bought Metal Gear Solid, um, Mega Man Legends Three. Oh shit! Mega Can Man you Legends imagine 3, that? Baby. Thing is, it can't look like the anime games that they have now. The anime side scroll looking ass shit. It has to look legit. It can still look like Final Fantasy esque. But it has to have like I was gonna say Me- Mega Man X, but they don't need to remaster that game. No, Mega Man X, my ass. They do not need to remaster it because it's just perfect the way it is. Damn, that would be the shit, dude, for real. <laughs> no, but um, <laughs> that's a good one. But yeah, like, but, no, but if I bought the GameCube, whatever, and I bought the Twin Snakes, the Twin Snakes is really expensive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's per- there. Let me let me see how not much it's going for. Not a lot of copies. For. It's rare. Rarity, yeah. Yeah, it's rare. Like me, like me be, and Tutorial uh, were looking up like prices on like old school like untouched like N sixty four games like like Super Smash Bros is like seven hundred dollars or some shit. It's what? fucking crazy, bro. It's crazy. Like unopened and everything. Wow. Let me see. <laughs> Excuse me. For me, it would be uh 
it would absolutely be, and you've heard me say it time and again because I just love this game, Sarge's Heroes. 100, $179. Because you, jeez, uh, forget about it. Because it's an old shooter, and I think they could make running around with little plastic green men as a modern day shooter really fun. Really? Yeah. Hell yeah. And Sarge's uh, girlfriend is sexy, and she would look great in modern graphics. Um, what, what other PlayStation 1 game can they get away with? I mean, it's it, it's like for me, it's what would bring something that is visually would be really unique today. That's why it went with that one. And that same t- so like it took a somewhat serious approach as far as military. Like they're like all those characters are really serious about what's going on, even though you're like coming into. It's like, did you ever play Star Wars Heroes? Oh my god! Okay, so check it out. There's another world, the plastic army world, right? Uh-huh. Where you got the tans, the greens, the blues, the purple, whatever, right? Yes. Yeah. And so you're the green army, the good army, the general Patton army, so to speak. Oh, no. Uh, was, oh, no, I turned down because it's yeah, like 5%. Was... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we're almost done anyway. And so uh, the tan army is the bad guys, and they're coming out with these weapons where it's, it was literally a magnifying glass on top of a tank. And they're going around melting the green army. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, where are they getting these weapons from? So they find out that they are little portals that lead to our world. And they're stealing our, like, random junk shit to bring back into their world to fuck up little plastic guys. Right, so you're yeah. going into the, the real world. Oh, I know exactly sabotage. what game you're talking about. You know what I'm about. talking about? Yeah, I never played oh, it, though. It's so much fun, dude. Never played I it, I love that game. If they redid that today and gave it more smoother combat, oh, it'd be so good. I know what game they can remaster. Mm. Dino Crisis. I did not play Dino Crisis. I have it. You have it? I have the first one. Let's Dino see, Crisis see, 2. Hold on a Dino Crisis see. 2, Masterpiece. Dino Crisis 2 is probably expensive right now, too. Let's see how much it's, it costs. I think it's like, in the store, it was, it was pretty expensive. Dino Crisis 2. I think I'm going to probably get it. Yeah. Um. Do you think that they need to be remastering? Or do you think they've hit that stalemate where everything that can be made today is kind of being made, so they're kind of going back and... Revisiting because Xbox isn't doing that, and they already don't have enough as there as it is. How's that PlayStation's getting away with it? I mean, they they're kind of doing it though, like the Bioshock remastered uh, collection oh, and stuff like I guess that. So, yeah. You know, I mean, but at the same time, that's not like Halo. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. You always got to bring that one up. That's like staple, you know. And every, like ten years from now, they come out with the Xbox, you know, whatever extreme then they they still got to come out with a remastered edition mm-hmm. of all the halos what influence if any do video games and movies have on mass domestic however you want to phrase it violence Ooh, that, it's a it's a it's pretty a stupid, deep serious topic yeah well. but it's like you can't you can't blame the media for what mm. You know, for psychopaths, you just mm-hmm. you can't. It just doesn't make any fucking sense. The, you remember the uh, that school shooting? Because uh... if that were the case, because I've been watching rated R movies since I was three years old. I've been playing mm-hmm. violent games since I was a kid. Yeah. So it's like. So he, here's the thing, right? Everybody wants to go and say, "Oh, the kids are being poisoned." I said, uh, well, I forget what that really big shooting was at the end of the '90s, early 2000s. I think it was like '99 or 2000. There's a school shooting bath in L. I forget what it was. But all the, like the four, three, four kids or whatever, they were big Doom players. And so the media, that was the first time that video games were actually targeted as a negative source. Like saying, oh, these guys are Doom players. They're playing. And there's that pixelated ass in space shooting monsters and aliens. Doom. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's so dumb. Saying they're practicing. I have it too. This. <laughs> you killer. Um, they, they are practicing to do this. By uh, pl- by playing these games, they're practicing and honing their skills to go on the shooting. You know what I mean? And it's like, here's the thing. Check this out. And this is an unofficial statistic, but it makes complete sense. These games that are distributed internationally and played by billions. No, let's say multi-millions, but maybe a couple of billion. Internationally, right? Yeah. Yet the U.S., is the only place where you're seeing mass child or mass school shootings and dumb shit like that you know what I mean where people try to peg it on video games where everywhere else in the world no one's going it just sounds like an excuse you know and and here's so I don't want to get too deep but here's where I, I, I when people want to take that make that argument my first thought is well what do you expect when you're raising 
a generation without any kind of core family values. Yeah. Whereas the rest of the world is very traditional. You have very traditional Asian cultures. You have very traditional African cultures. You have very traditional, you know, European cultures even. You know, even though they're more more westernized, modernized, whatever, still very traditional. And then you're going to come to America where everything is all about breaking tradition and, you know, feel, be who you want, all that, you know, be unsure, whatever. And then you're going to be surprised when someone says, well, I'm not sure, so maybe I'm meant to be a killer. You know what I mean? Just, I'm being noble. Yeah, no, but nobody, it's like, nobody plays GTA you, you and, and yeah. go, wow, I think I should go kill some hookers. Honestly, but man, it's like, it all matters on the person's mindset. You can't mm -hmm. blame video games. Mm -hmm for that specific reason if there's something mentally wrong in their head that they're gonna do any type of damage whatsoever it has nothing to do with the media exposing them to violence and here's another thing right it's another case where it comes down to parents these things are gated you got the ESRB you've got family ratings for movies they they recommend don't watch don't play unless you're mature or 17 years or older and yet everyone lets their kids do it anyways and then they want to attack the game companies when they should just make them be making responsible decisions you know? Yeah. If it says rated M, my kid ain't playing it. Unless it's just rated M because, you know, someone swore a couple times. Jesus it's not a wrong game, we're not going to worry about it. But, yeah, that's all I want to delve into with that. You know, let's see. So, our final topic. With 4% left to go on the iPad. Yeah. yeah the last topic, it's not going to be long, obviously, because it's just a... Oh, well, I'm sure we'll branch off with something yeah. like this one. But, most gorgeous celebrity, Man Crush... On an African American, Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Michael Jeez. B. Jordan. He's my new. He's my new man crush. <laughs> he is my new man crush. I have to lend Percy fucking money again. This dude. Oh my gosh. Mine. I'm gonna go old school. Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Williams. Look him up. He was in Star Wars, the old Star Wars movies. Billy D. Williams. He was in. He was in a lot of movies. I forget what the name of well, one was. What but he was the in this one running movie with. Uh, what is this? See? Oh yeah, he's so old now. <laughs> okay, let me correct. Billy D. Williams in the seventies, <laughs> not Billy D. Williams today. Billy D. Williams seventies. Oh, he is a stud, bro. Let me see. Hold on. <laughs> but if I was gonna go modern though, Idris Elba. Oh wow, he was a stud. Right? Look at that dude. Look at this dude right here. Oh my god. But uh, Idris Elba, bro, today, absolutely, hands down. There's this movie we in general watched just recently. Um, oh, what was it called? Oh, it's called, like, The Mountain Between Us. Have you heard of it? The it's Mountain Between Us? Him and this white lady, uh, they have a plane crash in, like, the mountains, some snowy-ass mountains, and they yeah. got to survive. And uh, how, do you spell, how do you spell that name? The, the... Mark Wahlberg isn't black. But he's idiot. not black. Well, he might as well be black. I don't know. <laughs> you can get away with saying shit. What, what, what was the other name? Uh, Idris Elba? You yeah. don't recognize Idris Elba? Thor. He played the dude with the sword who opened the portal. That's okay. I'm about to kill you. How do you spell his name? E-D-R-I-S. Elba. There you go. I-D-R-I-S. Oh! Yeah, I knew you'd recognize him. Not him, bro. Today, that mean, he could be he could be my man and I wouldn't... My Ew! Oh God! Michael Jackson. No, he, he didn't even die black. Uh, no, black Michael Jackson is he's, too he's, emotional and soft. Jermaine, stop teasing. Jermaine, <laughs> Jermaine, stop teasing. Got to get tissue. Michael Jackson. Good lord. Yeah. I'll Randy see. Jackson. No dog. Uh, you no, know forget about it. You know who the perfect guy is? Who? He'd be the most protective man. He would back you up. He would keep people off your ass. You know who? Samuel Jackson. Motherfucker. Old school Samuel Jackson. Mm-hmm. Well, not today. God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Fuck me uh, in the ass, motherfucker! <laughs> 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 Uncle Ruckus. Huh? Can you picture him saying, Honey, could you get my wallet? Where is it? It's the one that says bad motherfucker on it. <laughs> Oh, man. Mmm, this is a tasty dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
That's fucking awesome. Let me get some Pino Grigio to wash down this delicious. Do I penis. look like a bitch? <laughs> 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 oh fuck, dude. Oh shit. <laughs> Slap my ass, motherfucker. <laughs> Have you ever seen uh, that that Star Wars meme? It was a joke on the Last Jedi, and they titled it "The Last Motherfucker." <laughs> the had, Last Motherfucker they had his face all over. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the Last <laughs> Motherfucker. Oh God, <laughs> damn, dude! Uh, oh, I think I, I think I'm sticking with Michael B. Jordan. He's like the new face Man. nowadays. You know what I mean? He's just the new jacked body. That's he's all. He's not really he... new new jacked. He's 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 a uh... like in his last five movies, he was not jacked. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? He's just big right now because he's jacked and Creed, yeah, because of Creed and shit. He wasn't even that jacked in Creed. He was very defined, but he wasn't I was that just jacked. watching yesterday. No, yeah, no. He was he was definitely really, really cut. He was definitely, yeah. you know, definitely sized. He's definitely sized up since then. He's a fair actor. I don't think he's that great of an actor, bro. I don't know. He's, I don't think he's bad. I, 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 think he's I mean, I de- he definitely has some, some types of way to go. With Han Solo finds out. Oh, he, yeah. Resend me that link. I'll show him. I'll show them. Yeah. Um. I mean, okay, so I, I, I'll probably have to think about this for a sec, because... You know, you know who else was a stud back in the day? Mm. Harrison Ford. Yeah, he was. Yes, he was. But he's not black. No, I was just thinking about... I was just back thinking about... I was just thinking about... I don't know, like... like I, the reason I'm like I'm saying Michael B. Jordan now is just because like he's 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 blown up drastically since Creed. Huh. Oh, that's some popped up when you. Yeah, you know. Um, you know what? I'm gonna say uh, Will. No, not Will. I forgot what his name is. The black kid in uh, Stranger Things. He's gonna be the new new. And yeah, I, and, I, and I'm calling him already. But he's only sixteen. I'm calling. He's 16 for real? Yeah, you're a fucking pedophile ass motherfucker. I thought he was at least like 11. Nah. Only 11 or nah, 12. He's, he's 16. That that kid is not 16 playing the role of a of a damn 11 year old. Yeah. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, he's 16. He's a little dude. Yeah. Um, I think with looking, the, <laughs> when they're hiring like looking for the redhead stunted chick. black the, kids. The redhead chick, cause she's 15. Talking about uh, uh, the one that he has a crush on in Stranger Things. Oh, 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 her. Yeah, she's fifteen. Uh, L. Uh, L. Not. Oh L. man, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for her to turn eighteen so I can totally go creeper status on she's, her. She is adorable. She's thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, about. I want to say about fourteen. Yeah. actually. Yeah, she's about fourteen. Uh, okay. I keep thinking there's like a new fucking message there. Oh, no. Um, we need to decide. We need to decide on who's going to win this man crush. Not Michael B. Jordan. Okay. Take your boy in his prime. My guy in his prime. I can, And you can pick either of my guys, too. Not no. even a competition. You could take Billy Dee Williams or you could take Idris Elba. Hey, bro, this is a serious topic. And you want to compare them. Wait, this hold is on, good. hold on. You want to compare Michael B. Jordan to either of those guys. You also got to compare... Well, we're, the we're, acting we're, ability. What are we? Yeah, so yeah, in is, their youth, is acting still ability better. is acting ability coming into factor for this, or is it just straight up looks for man crush? I'm gonna go with looks. You can go with looks. Still not Michael B. Jordan. It's Absolutely perfect. Billy D. One hundred and ten percent Billy D. Williams. Pull him up again. Pull him up again. Look at that face. Tell me. I'm trying to think. Jordan is able to pull off those kinds of looks. In a magazine. I got it. Young Denzel. From Training Day. Done. That's it. Denzel Decided. Wins. Denzel. Denzel. Washington. Training, training Day. Forever. Training Day Denzel. <laughs> so darn cool. Training Day Denzel. So darn clever. <laughs> training Day Denzel. That's it. He wins. Oh, man. Denzel. Even old Denzel. Oh. All right. So you, so you tell me you're going to fuck me. Is that what you're trying to do? Ah, 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 my man, go ahead and pull that shit out, man. Get your ass over here and spit my he goes, y'all creepy as hell. Like Dan doesn't understand that this is a topic. This is this, this is, is always important. gonna be this is gonna be the last topic on every single. It's always gonna be man crush stuff, bro. Always at the, yeah, it's gonna be the last topic at the end of it's every show. It's all people show. care about. All people care about is man sex. crush. 
It's the man crush. Or man crushes, but sex on man crushes. Uh, man crushes. You, gotta, you gotta have the man crush at the end of every fucking podcast. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the side you got, effect. You gotta, leave, you gotta leave the audience drooling, if not over us, over an undeniably gorgeous man. Absolutely. Cool, man. Shout out. Okay, cool. All right. Mm. That's all our topics for this week. And we got a couple of uh, good suggestions from uh, Lord of the Cubed. Hashtag pubed. 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 <laughs> what? Pubes. Pubes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to change your name now to pubes. Oh, but, uh. All right, so let's, uh, yeah. let's get where we can, uh, people can find us. Um. I'm SoCal's one son with underscores surrounding the number one. Uh, you can find me mainly on social medias. You can find me on the, the Twitter. You can find me on Instagram a lot. Um, you can add me on PS4. I'll play there. And when I get a PC, I'll probably do the same name with the underscores, most likely, just to keep the branding the same. We're bringing him over to the elite side. Uh, I'll, I'll, still be, I'll still be grubbing it. On my controllers, gotta throw it down on the stick, son. Cash me online, how about Cash that? Me online. Uh, you can find me at uh, my Twitter, obviously, which is Dan. You piece of shit, you left. <laughs> I'm keeping that. <laughs> 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 Fuck you! Uh, I should never told you my crushes. <laughs> uh, so you can find me at uh, Mikey Boombots TV uh, at Twitch. You can find me as well on Twitter at Mikey Boombots TV. Oh no, he's back. I just showed that he looked like he left. Just kidding, we love you. Just kidding, we love you. Um, yeah, Mikey Boombots TV at Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as well, MikeyBots92. Uh, you can find me on PlayStation 4. I was about to say PlayStation 3 because we talk about PlayStation 3. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on PlayStation 3, dog. You can find me on PlayStation 2. Uh, baby. <laughs> um, you can find me on PlayStation 4 at Vice City 600. And you can add me on Steam as well. Uh, it's just Mikey Boom Bots. I didn't add the TV yet, but I probably will. So yep, yep. try either of those, those two names. But We'll be uploading this to both of our YouTube channels. Um, hopefully by close of the day tomorrow, maybe Monday, if depending yeah. how quickly editing goes for me. If anything, you can always just rewatch this on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unedited. Raw. Uncut. Raw. Throbbing throbs the throbs thanks for watching guys give us a follow if you want to uh catch us for future podcasts